a little bit about you um, and how you got into your sport. So who wants to go first? Do you want to go first, Amy? Yeah, sure. So again, I'm Amy Bilquist. Um, I got into swimming pretty young. So we moved to Arizona when I was three years old and we had a pool in the backyard with no fence around it. And my parents were like, you need to be water safe. So my mom would just take me in there every single day and kind of bounce me around. And I guess I just fell in love with the water super early on. My dad used to have a voicemail on his phone when I was probably four or five and called him at work. And I was like, dad, when you get home, can we take a dip in the pool? So I just loved swimming, loved being in the water. Um, like being in the water is kind of like a second home to me and like it's really comforting. And so, yeah, I got into swimming that way. And um, Valerie and I both went to University of California, Berkeley. So that was really cool. So swimming's taken me a lot of places in that route. Um, I currently live in Scottsdale, Arizona again, but um, during this quarantine, I'm at home with my parents in California. Okay, so I just have a question. So you love swimming in a pool. Yeah. Do you love open water swimming by any chance? I've gotten better at it. Um, I like the shorter distances, so open water tends to be longer. Um, but no, I, I like being out in the ocean a lot. Actually, at, for Cal, we went to Hawaii every year for our training camp, so we do a lot of ocean work, and that was probably one of my favorite like weeks of the year. Oh, that is awesome. Okay, well, that's really great. I'm just so excited <laughs> to have you here. So I'm excited Val, to be here. Will you introduce us to yourself as well, please? Yeah, my name is Valerie Arioto. Um, I grew up in Pleasanton, California, which is pretty close to Berkeley. So I kind of stayed local for college. Um, I'm currently living in Walnut Creek, um, California. So I'm born and raised California, kind of stayed in California, and I in the future, going to stay in California also. Um, but playing softball for me, it was more of like a community thing. Like all of my friends were playing softball. Um, and that's what kind of sport does for you. Because when I grew up, I played soccer, basketball, I water skied, I did gymnastics, I danced. So I was always an active kid. But something around the community with softball just kind of made me stick with it and keep going. And, um, you know, I played for 10 years on the national team. And one of the things I take away from this whole experience in my career is like my forever friends. And that's what I think sport does. That is so cool. I, I just love, um, I always wish as an individual athlete, you know, Amy, I think it's just so awesome that you get to be an individual athlete and a team athlete and Valerie, that you get to have your team behind you. Like that just, it makes me so jealous. It was, I mean, it was so much fun because we had our US ski team, but really, you know, when you celebrate together and you go through all of those moments together, it's just, oh, I just, I just love people. And I think that's why I'm having such a hard time with this quarantine is because I need the people. So, yeah. <laughs> so a squad I'm really, is important. It is so important. So I'm really, I'm really just like super jealous of you ladies right now having your squads behind you. So, oh, and I totally forgot to ask you guys before we got on the call, do you have equipment with you that you brought that yes. you want to share with us? Because I do. that is so cool. And I just want to see what you guys have. What's like in your closet? What do you got there? Share it with us. Yeah. So I have here my whole that arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> the money sign one might be my favorite. <laughs> oh, that is sweet. Okay. So how did but you get that one? Um, it's kind of cool. You can customize the different bats. Um, so I have my name on them. I even sometimes put like a quote, something inspiring to like keep me in the game, keep me reminded that I can do it. Um, but uh, I think it's kind of cool. Like it, you can show your personality through this, through a bat, but it's kind of weird how many I have in my apartment, but <laughs> <laughs> no, that is really cool. I just need like one bat. I think I only have one plastic bat because my son is, you know, loves balls and bats. And so I think that's what we have is one plastic bat. So maybe we need to come over and borrow yours. Yeah, I can send you one. <laughs> okay, that's all. You got to sign in first though, okay? Sign in. Girl. I got you, sign yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right Amy what do you have there yeah so a uh, summer is just carry on one of these nice mesh bags um ah. in here I have a kickboard that's really cute it's got cactuses come from Arizona <laughs> uh -huh. and now do those like float right on the water or do yeah, they like they do they float okay okay yeah. um these are this is probably my favorite piece of equipment they're fins um oh. so fins used to be like really long but now they're kind of a short powerful one so these are fun but I would say probably the most like interesting thing in my equipment bag is a wiffle ball so we um we actually Wait hold these minute. in our hands when we swim 
So it's like you're slipping right. through the water. So you have to learn how to catch with like your whole forearm and not just swimming with your hands. So yeah, oh my, my actually gosh. my high school coach came up with this and I've used it ever since. It was really interesting. Helped. That, Amy, is why I am a terrible swimmer. I need a wiffle ball. <laughs> I'll send you Thank wiffle you. balls. <laughs> <laughs> I really need that. I really do. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and I'm going to do it. So, hey, before we go on, um, so we have a question from the audience. And, Amy, somebody wants to know, have you ever thought about swimming the English Channel? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a okay, why not? for the why people not? who do. I personally don't think I could have goggles on my face that long. I've seen some people come out of these long open water swims and their faces get so puffy around the goggles. And I just, I think I could swim that long. I, that's not what I'm questioning. I just, the goggles would just kill me <laughs> and I need sleep. I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's a long way. I like my sprints. <laughs> okay. I'll paddle next to the that? summer though and cheer them on. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, so our topic today, ladies, is um, beyond the arena. And so I think this is just, I think this is a really important topic, right? Because so many people just the, see Olympians as like, oh my gosh, they've just got this one focus. And, and what do they do? You know, how do they take what they've learned into real life? And I have to be honest, um, when you retire, it's, it's tough, you know, but as you start to figure out kind of what you're doing and what your purpose is again and identify, you know, in a different way, you really realize that everything that we do in sports translates into the real world. So I just kind of wanted to dive a little bit deeper with you guys on that um, and just kind of talk about it. And, you know, honesty is, is our, is our biggest thing. And so I think, you know, being in today's society right now, we're all quarantined, things are going crazy. And how, how do we relate? How do we, you know, take what we've learned and move it forward and pivot and shift and, and, you know, you guys trying to train for a whole nother year. So I've got some questions um, that I really, really want to ask of you. And the first one, so Valerie, you can take this one if you want, but what okay. are some of your highest highs and your lowest lows? Interesting question. Yeah. So, <laughs> right? I, I'm going to start with the lowest lows and then get to the, the height. But um, okay, good, the lowest good, lows, good. Um, I would say um, our sport has been in and out of the Olympics. Um, the last time we were in the Olympics for softball was 2008. Um, so I haven't had the opportunity to play in the Olympics yet. So this will be my first Olympics, which I'm really excited for and honored for and uh, honored. And it, it's going to be really exciting. But I think the lowest of the lows of my career was when softball got taken out of the Olympics. And not just myself, but the whole future of softball and the young youth of softball kind of lost that hope. Um, it didn't have that highest stage to kind of look up to. So that for me was, and, and all your hard work and your dreams just kind of like shut down in one decision. So um, that was a hard time for a lot of us uh, in the softball community. But I would say on the flip side, then um, the highest high was when we, we got to be a part of a generation that got softball back into the Olympics. So we were probably a little part of happen? doing that. Um, how did that happen, of, by the way? Yeah, so like a lot of like go out and then how did it come back? So um, it was a decision from the IOC to take softball out, um, and and the reasoning was that it's not as popular in um, countries like Europe and in different places around the world, um, which is understandable. So I think this this last decade or so we've been focused on um, spreading the sport and spreading it to Europe and to other countries and doing our part in in the education of the sport as well because softball is so big in the United States. So that's kind of one of the ways that we kind of got back in is, is that, and of course, Japan loves softball and baseball. So 2020, um, they were a little biased in that, yes. but I love it. <laughs> Yay. Was, uh, oh, that. well, that's so. awesome. That's yeah. really, really cool. I know it confused me. I was like, wait, it left and then now it's back. And like, how did that even happen? Yeah. So I'm yeah. really, really excited. Cool. Thank okay. Yeah. Amy, so what are some of your, um, your highest highs or lowest lows or, and, or, and then in whichever way you want to do it? Yeah. Um, so I would say it's actually one thing kind of similar to Valerie's. Um, mine was, so in 2016, um, that was my second Olympic trials and so how it works for swimming for most events, besides the relay events, being the 100 and 200 freestyle, is it's the top two swimmers go to the Olympics. Um, so I actually came third and fourth in 2016, and I oh. missed the team by eight one hundredths of a second and then 48 one hundredths of a second. 
So at that time in my life, that was the lowest low I've ever felt. <laughs> lowest, lowest low. And I just felt like I was a failure. I felt like all my hard work just went to nothing. And then really coming out of that a few years later, the hindsight of that was the best meet I've ever had in my life. I was dropping time left and right. I really built up my confidence, brought my swimming to a whole nother level. So being that it once felt like a failure, now it feels like almost I've been in that spot and I've been so close. Now I can do it. Um, so that was kind of my highest high and my lowest low. Okay. So I have a question. Um, on that, what was your, I call it the Monday morning, right? So when you didn't qualify, mm -hmm. what was, what was that next day like? Did it, I mean, you know, and it could be yeah. not just the Monday morning, right? But like, what was right. your first step back to be able to be like, okay, that was devastating, but now here I go, here I've got to prepare. Cause I feel like mm -hmm. so many people at home right now are just like, oh my gosh, my job, like what, what is this even going to look like? And right. what is that? Like, what's the first step that you have to take to be able to get back to where you know you can be? Yeah. So the way swimming Olympic trials, it's interesting. It's eight days long. So it's eight days of prelim semis finals, that kind of thing. So the hundred back, which is my best event, which I got third in is on day two. So I had six more days of the meet. So I had it. I walked out. You have to do media right after the race too. So you're just trying to be like, everything is great. Everything's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, after everything calmed down. And I, I think the first time I really broke down is when I saw my family they asked, um, after I got out of the meet at that night and I gave them a hug and this was really hard. Went to my hotel room, had a good cry. And then I literally was sitting on the bathroom floor crying, look up in the mirror. And I was like, the meet's not over. The meet's not over. Like you can still make it. You have the 200 back later. Like you have a shot at this. And I think I tried to carry that mentality too after and the 200 back when I just missed it in that one too. And just really to look, pick myself up, look myself in the mirror, be like, this one didn't work. Why isn't there another shot? Like I love that. in four more years, I have this another shot. Why am I not doing everything I can to make it the best opportunity and for this not to happen again in four years. So I think that for me, it was just awesome. really allowing myself to be angry, sad, pissed off for that window. And then be like, look myself in the mirror and be like, you've got this, like, let's go time to get back to work. I love it. I swear you girls, um, it's so funny, right? Cause I, as I watch the summer games and especially in your sport, I mean, you guys are playing like every day, every other day swimming, you got like relays, you got team <laughs> events, you got single events. And my event is literally one day, two runs of 30 <laughs> seconds each. So when you talk wow. about like either what, like the highest high or the, like, just the biggest take back of your life, you know, cause then you've got to sit there and watch it for two weeks. Cause our event is the first day. So I feel so fortunate that two out of my three Olympics, you know, I was successful and got to celebrate, but it just is so crazy. I'm like, I couldn't imagine like getting up two days later and then getting back in the gate again. So that's really, really cool. I love that. I love that you guys kind of can get into a zone and go. And if you mess up, you can wrap your head back around it and keep going. So I really, um, I really, really love that. So do you guys take, um, and this is a question for both of you. Do you really take the same approach in your training as you do into your competition? So do you, you know, what are, what are those things that you do to really kind of, you know, on a daily basis, is it about routine? Is it about, you know, doing absolutely everything that you can do? Tell me, you know, kind of what you guys do that is really carried into your competition and your life. If that makes sense. <laughs> if I yeah. Didn't um, <laughs> I think for swimming and training is all like for my training block and it be anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours and my race is hopefully less than a minute. <laughs> so I think it's really every day in practice, pushing myself past what I think I could have, I could do. And just really trying to beat my expectations, push my body further and further. And then that kind of translated to outside of the pool because when I got to college, I wanted to be a really good student. And I came in, I was like, all right, not the best, but not bad. And then I was like, okay, like I'm at Cal. Like I need to compete with the other students. Compete. You got to get going, so, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was just every day kind of just like putting in that extra 1% to keep getting better. And like, it's not just in the pool. It's, can I eat 1% better today? Can I talk to one person that can get me that network connection, you know, it's just really yeah. expanding and pushing yourself further and further every day. 
I love that. I love that. What about you, Valerie? I would say something that has translated over is punctuality because I feel like in sports, you're told like if you're, you know, on time, you're late and um, kind of that structured way of, um, you know, your day's scheduled out for you the whole time. So um, I think I've kind of translated that into my personal life. So I feel like I have a routine. I'm on top of it. Um, and I can, you know, take on my day or whatever else comes at me um, with a, a, you know, punctuality, but a nice structure and schedule. Oh, girl, I don't know how we can be friends. I am 10 minutes late. Oh, no. Oh, no. And, but, okay, okay. So here I just have to, I just have to prep. <laughs> okay, not, not as an athlete, but like now in real life, I, it's not because I want to be late and I very much respect everybody's time. Right. But like I yes. can fit in another load of laundry. I can vacuum one more room. So that one more that you're talking like about a competition, you know, yeah. it is. And I'm like, no, I got this. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, dang it. I'm 10 minutes late. So I, I, I need Valerie. We need to hang out more. So yeah, we can be like more punctual together. Some, <laughs> some of my, some of off. my teammates are, are late people also. So there's a good mix of us on the team of punctual people and late people. But that's how we kind of, you know, find middle ground is having all types of personalities. So, and for <laughs> okay. me, I think scheduling and planning makes me feel good. So it's like a self-care thing. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to steal from Oprah right now, but, um, have you ever had that aha moment of just, you know, you're just struggling and working so hard and, and things just don't seem to be clicking. And then all of a sudden just this one thing changes for you and all of a sudden it clicks into place and you're like, aha, like I get it now. I get, I get what's going on and this is the moment that it all makes sense. So have any of you had that on, on the field or in the pool? Yeah, I think um, I had that in college, especially my senior year. I think college for me was a bit of a struggle as it went through. I mean, definitely being a student athlete in college is not easy. And I just kind of felt like I was overwhelmed all the time and just, barely getting by and then I had my senior year a freshman come up to me and just be like hey you're such a great leader thank you so much for everything you do for everyone on the team and I was like whoa like here I am thinking I was just barely getting by and like not even thinking of myself as a role model or a leader for these guys and I think for me that was the aha like swimming has taught me so much more than just swimming fast it has taught me how to relate with people, how to get people on the same page, lift people up. And for me, that was like, wow, no matter how I swim this season, I've made her life better. So like, for me, that was my biggest aha and like really wanted to yeah. really force me to like, want to lift the others around me. I love that. Oh, that, that gives me all the feels girl. I love that. Valerie, <laughs> what about you? Yeah, I would say my aha moment was um, kind of after I broke my leg my senior year in college, or my supposed to be senior year in college, and I ended up redshirting and coming back um, the following year. And during my injury, it was like the worst thing in the world. It was just like, oh my gosh, how can this happen my senior year? But um, after I started recovering and switching the narrative a little bit, I started to like take a step back and look around. And um, I noticed like how many people were supporting me and helped me through such a hard time and how many people had my back. It was kind of like, wow, like I am so grateful and appreciative of everyone around me. This is like, how could I not go back to softball with like a light heart and just joy because people in the community are just amazing. Isn't that so cool when sometimes, you know, it just feels like you're in it all by yourself, you know, even yeah. with, when you're with your team. I mean, I felt like that. Um, you know, as a member of my team, I was just like, oh my gosh, but the struggle just feels so alone. And I think in times of injury and, you know, when we have our lowest moments, we, we do really realize the people around us and, you know, they're willing to lift us up and to give us that call or, you know, give us that hug that makes us feel so good. I feel like that now. I feel like, oh my gosh, yesterday I was literally like a ball of mess. And I had two of my really good friends that just called me and just lifted me up, you know? So I really, I, I just love that. And I think that we need that so much right now. So totally. that's really, really great. Okay. So yeah. I could talk to you girls forever. This is so fun. But <laughs> one thing that I really, um, that I love learning about, and I think people at home do too, is so right before you get into the batter's box, uh, Valerie, what what is going through your mind and how are you preparing for that moment? You know, a moment of uncertainty, something that you've planned for your entire life to make, you know, this great hit and what is going through your mind? 
Yeah. So I think um, when you step into the box, it's like there's a few seconds before the pitcher throws the ball. So it, that's, I think, is a crucial part is like you could let your thoughts kind of take over and take you in the wrong direction. Um, but being able to get into the right mindset is really important when you get into the box and you're kind of in that waiting period. Um, so I have one of my, my bats. But a lot of times um, I like to loosen my top hand as like a physical reminder to my mind ah. to also chill out. So having my, my body yeah. loose and my mind kind of clear um, gets me in the right mind frame. But um, also like breathing obviously always helps no matter what, but getting in a good breath. Um, and then the thing that I usually do, not even, not even just in the, in the batter's box, but in life is um, kind of like positive affirmations and telling myself like, I can do this. Like no matter what it is, like if it's in softball or it's like day-to-day -day life, um, just giving yourself that like extra confidence because sometimes our mind is our worst enemy. Oh, I love that. I know that was always me. Like the last thing was just like, you've got this, like yeah. you are, you're in it. You got it. Like you've trained for this. There is nothing that you cannot do. So let's do it. Oh, I yes. love that. Okay. We're doing that tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Yeah. right before. <laughs> like, Come on, we got this. Yeah. All right. It'll get you through anything. You? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so assuming you're like in this little tent room before they walk you out. So you're sitting with everyone and in that room, I'm kind of more quiet, but just kind of keep to myself. I'm like, you've got this, like kind of the same thing, positive affirmations the whole time. And then when we walk out, a lot of people put headphones on and get in their zone that way. But I feel like my zone is really soaking in the environment, listening to the crowd and looking up, seeing my parents and just knowing that after I take my clothes off and they like blow the whistles to get on the block. Not all I your clothes. No, something. there's a suit on. There's a suit <laughs> on. Um, but uh, <laughs> there, so I, I actually, depending on how long the race is, whether it's two or four laps, I'll literally like look up and down the pool the exact amount of laps. I'm like, that's not that far. I can do that. Like, that's easy. I've got this. Let's go. And so for me, it's just really being like, you've trained so hard for this. Like you've got it. You're prepared. Don't doubt yourself. Oh, I love it. That just, oh man. Thank you girls. I'm so inspired. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's go do something. Oh, yeah. I can. All right. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So I always love, um, I, and, and so far it's been, I just want to do some rapid fire questions with you ladies. Okay. Because one, I just love like a quick answer. And, um, so whatever, whatever comes to your mind, whatever you guys think, just, just blurt it out. All right. So what is one Olympic sport you would never want to try? I would say, like never, I would say probably all winter sports because I'm just really <laughs> really scared of the snow and all of that so maybe you could teach me but at this point I'm scared <laughs> yeah girl you're coming out to Utah and I'm, I'm okay okay you're I'm open out. to learn I'm open to learn for sure <laughs> I what would I actually um winter sport as well I don't know what it's called but it's one where you go you're on skis and you go down the slope and then you jump uh -huh. like really with your far. two like at the V mm-hmm yeah. yeah. So that's called ski nope. jumping. I know. I yep. feel the nope. same way. <laughs> yeah. So just I so you break. guys have an idea, <laughs> my little brother is an Olympian in the sport of aerials, which is similar, except they go 60 feet up and twist and turn and then go down. I know. I'm like, how, I'm, how I'm related to him is, I don't even know. Yeah. It's <laughs> crazy. So I think one sport that I would never want to try is, um, is the marathon. Oh, because I, I'm like, cool. I'm adrenaline. Like, let's just get it going. You know, like yeah. 26 yeah. miles. I mean, I don't have time for that. So yeah. that's one that I would never want to try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what are you looking forward to the most at opening ceremonies? Um, I would just say like seeing the torch and all of the different kinds of flags and all the people who are just everyone. I feel like everyone's feeling the same thing in that moment. So just that collective emotion. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. What about you, Valerie? Um, I would say probably just to meet all the athletes and get inspired from them, but it's almost like you don't know what you don't know. So I'm going to go in like a little kid, just ready to like get excited um, and go from there. But you have been to the Olympics, obviously. So is there an advice that you would give to Amy and I? Okay. So the one thing that I really would love to tell you guys is that it, you're, you're there for a reason, right? Like you want to win a gold medal, but you cannot forget the journey and you can't forget all the fun and just meeting all the people. And so, you know, I, everybody had only told, 
had always told me about pin trading and I'm like, pin trade, I don't even know what that is. And then I got totally into it. And then they like, they were all over my hats and my lanyard and all these things. And it was just so much fun because it connected people from around the world. So I thought that was really, really fun and, and always bring like extra stuff so that you can trade with other athletes. So I remember I got like scarves from people from Australia and hats from France and, you know, it just truly makes it an international event. So I just encourage you to really be there for, you know, what you're there to do, but then also just soak it all up because it's so fun. So, okay. It's already been, it's already been almost a half hour, you guys. And so, wow. um, okay, really quick, like 30 seconds each. We just, I love last lasting impressions. I love paying it forward. Do you have one quote or one piece of advice that you want to pass on to our listeners at home? Amy, go. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to box this quote, but it's something <laughs> along the lines of like, you're going to get knocked down in life and you're going to get a, you're going to get keep getting knocked down in life, but you can always keep standing up. So never forget to stand up. I love that. That is awesome. Cause it is true. Life keeps kicking you down, but you just, you can keep getting back up. So I love mm -hmm. that. Valerie, what do you have? Um, I would say mine is I have it on, on, a couple of my bats too, as a reminder, but, um, good vibes only. I think it's really important just to enjoy life and enjoy the people you're around, um, and be compassionate with yourself and others, especially in a crazy time, like right now. Oh, okay. That is awesome. Oh, you girls are just so great. I could, I just really like want to be friends with all of you. Have you over <laughs> my house for dinner? Like it's just <laughs> fun. So thank you guys so much for being here. I just, it's, um, it's really inspiring. And I hope that everybody at home feels as inspired as I do talking with you. So I'm really proud of what you've accomplished. Um, and I cannot wait to follow your journey. I'm, I'm going to like break into Tokyo 2020, not really, but like <laughs> need a job there. So I'm going to try and figure it out so I can be there. So, and to all of you guys at home, thank you so much, um, for tuning in and, on behalf of all of the athletes from Rally with Champions, Valerie, Amy, and myself, thank you so much for joining our third live workshop. Um, if you loved it, please come again. Tell all your friends and family to join us too. And our next workshop is going to be on April 21st at, again, the same time at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And this time, our, our topic is going to be mental toughness. And I feel like these girls have a ton of mental toughness too, so they could just join us. But we're going to bring in two new ones. Um, Paige McPhee who is a Taekwondo athlete. Can you see all that? No, you can't. Don't remember <laughs> that. And then Eliza Stone, who is a fencer. So I just, I really think these are going to be two fantastic athletes and I can't wait to chat about their mental toughness and strategies. Um, so again, if you, if you are awesome at home and you want to be a torch warmer, just like us, please go back to um, our main page and donate because that is how these athletes are going to raise money and hundred percent of what you donate goes back to them. So thank you again from the bottom of of my heart. I hope your Olympic flame is burning just a little bit brighter and we'll see you next time on Rally with Champions. Thank you everybody. Bye. Thanks for having us. Thank Bye. you.